What I have in my hands is seeds of the sycamore tree behind me. These seeds contain information from the past. The behavior of the tree is all the result from millions of years. Each individual tree is unique in the same way that each person is unique. That uniqueness is reflected in, it, in the genetics and it's passed on from one generation to the next. If we didn't have that, they would all be the same and there would be a good chance that at some point some disease or some pest or something would, would just kill them all. So it's absolutely the foundation of, of our forests, the foundation of life. The Euphorgium programme stands for European Forest Genetic Resources programme, was set up to safeguard the genetic variation and variability in tree species in Europe. Over the time that Euphorgium has been in existence, there's been this benefit of bringing people together and to deal with issues which have emerged over time. You know, climate change wasn't such a big issue when, I think, when Euphorgium started. Now it's a really important issue. How do we react to that? Ultimately, genetic diversity is the foundation of the way we're going to deal with these problems. In the beginning, we sat together and we said, where should we start? We didn't have a clue. And we pretty well realized that if you only safeguard something and you keep it in a store, in a freezer, in a bank, you will not have the adaptive processes that you will need for future environmental conditions. When the cholera outbreak hit Britain, there was a huge concerns, the sort of threat that we might lose all our ash. Ash is such a widespread common tree in the landscape. One of the things I was asked to do was to try and find out what was going on in Europe. It was very straightforward through Euphrogen. I already knew people to talk to and find out who was doing what research. And it's very easy to move quickly. If you have enough patience and enough time, eventually you will have ash back again in our countryside. We have now have the kind of understanding and the ability to speed that process up. So we can actually hopefully jump the few hundred years that it would normally take and mitigate some of the worst impacts of losing the ash from our landscape. You can have all the technology, you can understand it, but at some point you've got to turn it into, into reality. You have to move it from out of the lab into the field. The practitioners, how do you persuade them that it's, it's going to work? And Euphrogen could probably help that they're not people who just work in the labs. There are people who do field trials and there are people who work alongside forest managers or like myself who work within the policy area. So it's that breadth is actually the way to transfer that academic knowledge to a practical result. I think that the most important thing that Euphorgen achieved is a European set of in situ gene conservation units. This in situ means it lives at the place where it is adapted and the gene conservation unit as such takes care for enough genetic variation that even in future there will be tree seeds that can adapt to different circumstances. There's a lot more unknown than there is known about forest genetic resources, that's for sure. There's a, there's a lot of mysteries and secrets inside these trees that we're not aware of that we need to find out. I mean these trees here, these are really quite old trees, they've, been in, they've gone through an awful lot in terms of different weather, you know, and they survive and they thrive. So we still haven't completely got to grips with just how adaptable trees really are. What we received, we don't own it, we just borrow it and we give it through to future generations. But knowing that we don't know everything yet, we should try to keep as much as possible. That also, when there is more knowledge gained, uh, that they find out that we did a good job.